Welcome to Proclaiming Justice, a podcast from PJTN that focuses the light of truth on vital issues in today's headlines that impact every American. I'm your host, Laurie Cardoza Moore, founder and president of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, and I'm here to educate, motivate, and activate you to action. I want to arm you with the truth and the facts you'll need to fight and preserve our constitutional republic and uphold the Judeo-Christian values our nation was founded upon. Welcome to Proclaiming Justice, a podcast from PJTN that shines the light of biblical truth on vital issues from today's headlines that impact every American, Jew and Christian, people of faith and people of conscience. I'm your host, Laurie Cardoza Moore. On today's podcast, I will be discussing PJTN's campaign to take back America's children and how our children are being indoctrinated with propaganda through critical race theory, how to recognize it, and how to challenge your local officials. If you missed the previous episodes of our podcast, you will find them in our previous podcast lineup on our website at pjtn.org. I also want to remind you to listen and share this and all of our previous podcasts with your family and friends so that they can become more informed about this and other related issues. Our goal at PJTN is to equip you to stand against the disinformation by taking back local control of your community and your children's and grandchildren's education. In the book of Ezekiel, God warned the prophet to tell the watchman, if you see the enemy advancing on the city and fail to warn the inhabitants, then if any blood is shed, it will be required of that watchman. But if the watchman warns the inhabitants and they refuse to heed the warning, if their blood is shed, it will be required of them. Remember to visit our website daily to receive updates on all of PJTN's groundbreaking initiatives and programs and sign up to receive PJTN's media and action alerts to share with family and friends. As a PJTN watchman, your action could mean all the difference in the success of our global mission to combat the enemy that is trying to rob our children of their future. So please help me spread this vital information today. We are commanded in the Bible to teach our children the Word of God as is stated in Joel 1.3, where it says, Tell your children about it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That's three generations of children are to be taught about God's covenant with Israel, and unfortunately, we have failed miserably. So what can we do to take back local control of our community? What are some actions that must be taken? Today, we are going to continue our conversation on critical race theory, how to recognize it, and how to challenge teachers, school board members, and state legislators who support it. Parents and citizens are mobilizing against the history revisionism with critical race theory. Holocaust revisionism, and now even anti-Semitism, is being redefined. Organizations that used to be respected and trusted have bought into universalizing the Holocaust, which basically means that the Holocaust is being ta taught like it is just any other genocide. This delegitimizes the Holocaust as a unique event in history, and it also denies the memory of six million men, women, and children who perished at the evil leadership of Adolf Hitler in Germany and throughout Europe. This is a very dangerous trend, ladies and gentlemen. Hitler's final solution was to the Jewish question, not the gypsy question or the communist question. This movement threatens the future of our republic and the future of our Judeo-Christian values. More and more teaching organizations like NEA, as well as teachers unions, have bought into this propaganda. Here in Tennessee, for example, the executive director of the Tennessee Council for the Social Studies, Mark Fincham, has publicly stated his opposition, which you can find on their website. The Tennessee Council for the Social Studies takes this position to express our concern and opposition to the amendment 
to House Bill 0580 and also Senate Bill 0623. The TCSS echoes the sentiments written by the Tennessee Alliance for Equity and Education in its open letter, as well as those written by the National Council for the Social Studies, of which TCSS is an affiliate. Quote, this bill delegitimizes the teaching profession by calling into question teachers' academic qualifications and pedagogical decision-making. The bill perpetuates a misunderstanding of what practices occur in Tennessee public schools and of what constitutes history and social studies education by conveying the notion that teachers present only static facts about the past. What we know about the past is only known to us through the interpretation of evidence, which is an extension of imperfect individuals who have limited perspectives and biases. History, then, is not what happened, but is a study of the past filled with inferences, decisions about significance, interpretations, inclusions, and omissions, generally accepted facts, and even speculations. By censuring the comprehensive history social science education that is required of students, this bill will hinder social studies educators' work to produce students who can master historical thinking skills and evaluate multiple perspectives in order to be productive, responsible, and competent citizens in our diverse and democratic society. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what the TCSS, as well as teachers' organizations like NEA and others, um, feel about the whole critical race theory and the notion that there are state legislators that are actually trying to remove critical race theory and make it illegal to teach critical race theory. But I want to just go back and point out something that was really important that I hope you all heard in their, in this statement by Mark Fincham, where he talked about how um, the biases of the individuals He said that what we know about the past is only known to us through the interpretation of evidence, which is an extension of imperfect individuals who have limited perspectives, biases, and prejudices. This statement right here, Mark is trying to make it appear that because we're looking at um, uh, interpretation of evidence, well, if we're studying history, ladies and gentlemen— and the social studies. And we're studying, for example, civics and um, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, all of the founding documents. There is no confusion about what our founders documented, what they wrote, and where they, what their perspective was. Um, they didn't, it, it's not their interpretation. It's not our interpretation of what they stated. We're reading from original source documents that declared what they believed, why they were, um, uh, why they were uh, drafting these historic documents, why they were giving us the freedoms, why were they stating these freedoms that belong to us as individuals, as citizens. But what this, this Mark Fincham with TCSS is trying to communicate that these people or individuals are imperfect. So they're not going to interpret history accurately. They're going to be limited, as he says, in their perspectives. They're going to be biased and they're going to be prejudiced. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if there are imperfect individuals who have limited perspectives and biases and prejudices, it's not those who are teaching an accurate perspective of our history. We have the evidence. We have historical documentation. We have the founding documents to prove. There is no confusion about what was written. He goes on to say that history then is not what happened, but is a study of the past filled with inferences. So, we're inferring things upon what our what the framers of our Constitution um, were stating. Um, it, he goes on to say decisions about what was significant, what was significant, the interpretations or inclusions and omissions, generally accepted facts and even speculation. Well, you know, 
I would like to know what Mark thinks is generally accepted facts and even speculations. But ladies and gentlemen, this is what critical race theory is. Just listening to Mark Fincham's comments, his quotes, as he drafted this letter to um, uh, Chairman Reagan in the Tennessee State Legislature. This is clearly an example of where these people who want to rewrite history, these are the people that would support pulling down monuments because God forbid we have a monument, a marker, a historical marker in our country that communicates about an individual or an event in history that actually happened and that it might be interpreted or in, there might be inferences that are inaccurate and not correct. Um, You know, it's important for us in order to identify the opposition of these teachers and these representative organizations, we need to know what they believe. We need to know, you know, is there one race or sex that is inherently superior to another race or sex? Do they believe this? This is what I want to know from these, these educators and these organizations that supposedly represent these educators. I'd like to know, are the individuals by virtue of their race or sex, are they inherently privileged, racist, sexist, or oppressive, whether consciously or subconsciously? Is that what this group, is this what Mark Fincham believes? Does Mark and the TCSS, do they believe that an individual, um, that should an individual be discriminated against or receive adverse treatment because of the individual's race or sex? These are important questions. Um, what about um, uh, is an individual's moral, char- moral character determined by the individual's race or sex? Is that what Mark believes? Is that what these organizations believe? Does he believe that an individual, by virtue of the individual's race or sex, are they responsible for actions committed in the past by other members of the same race or sex? This is, again, These are examples of what critical race theory is. And Randy Weingarten tried to convince us that, oh, no, critical race theory is not being taught in our classrooms in high school or our secondary classrooms. That's being taught on college campuses. Really? Well, this is exactly these same questions. And here's another one. Should an individual feel discomfort, guilt, anguish, or another form of psychological distress solely because of the individual's race or sex, because that's what critical race theory is teaching. That's what they're accusing. Like the white privilege, anybody who's white, you've got to be privileged. And just by virtue of the fact that you are white and you were born white and you were born in America makes you racist. Um, Is the meritocracy, here's another question, is meritocracy inherently racist or sexist? Is that what Mark believes? Is that what TCSS believes? Or is it designed by a particular race or sex to oppress members of another race or sex? Ladies and gentlemen, this is this. These, again, are all examples of what critical race theory looks like, what it believes, what they're trying to put upon um, Americans. They're trying to put on white Americans who are privileged, accusing us of being racist when we are not. Um, Here's another question. Do they believe that this state, Tennessee, or any other state, for that matter, or the United States is fundamentally or irredeemably, irredeemably racist or sexist? Are we? These are questions we need to know. Do they promote or advocate the violent overthrow of the United States of America? Again, This is critical race theory. This is what people who support critical race theory believe, that our government should be overthrown violently. Uh, Another question I have for Mark, are they promoting division between or resentment of a race, a sex or religion, a creed, um, nonviolent political affiliation, social class or class of people? Do they promote that? Is that what they believe? 
Do they ascribe character traits, values, moral or ethical codes, privileges or beliefs to a race or sex or an an individual because of the individual's race or sex? Is that what they believe? Another question we need to ask them, do they believe that the rule of law does not exist? but instead is a series of powerful relationships and struggles among racial or other groups. We've seen the destruction of the rule of law in our country, ladies and gentlemen. Look at what has been happening across this country over the last year and a half, two years. Look at what happened in Oregon, in Washington State, in Michigan, in Wisconsin, in New York, Is that what these people believe? Is that what they're suggesting? Is this what they want to teach our children? Again, we wonder why men and women, moms and dads, citizens are showing up at school board meetings and they are holding their elected school school board members accountable. It's because of this garbage that they are trying to implement. Look at the state of California. They just... Um, voted, the state legislature just voted to adopt the ethnic studies model curriculum, making it a requirement that you cannot graduate from school, from high school in California, unless you've taken this ethnic studies model curriculum. It is just as biased. It's the same garbage, ladies and gentlemen, that they are teaching, except now they, because of the outcry, especially about anti-Semitism, Because of that outcry of the people that the content, that ethnic studies model curriculum was anti-Semitic, they decided to say, to throw in there, that Jews of color or from Arab countries are considered um, uh, a minority, an ethnic minority. However, Jews who are white and happen to come from Europe, not so much. They don't get that privilege They don't, they're basically put in the category of the white privilege. But it's the Jews that came from Arab countries who are Jews of color. They're considered a minority. This is what is being taught. And ladies and gentlemen, there are forms of this critical race theory, just like what we're describing here, um, that are being taught in classrooms across this country. This is why our children, you know, we've been at this battle fighting this, exposing this for over a decade. We have been warning parents and citizens about the content in the textbooks, telling our our local elected officials and our state legislators that we have got to get a handle on the, the propaganda being taught to our children because we are going to lose this country. Our children are going to turn on our country because of this content that is being peddled to them. And they accuse us of putting inferences into history. They are the guilty ones, ladies and gentlemen. They infer upon the white, so-called privileged Americans. They blame us for this. This is not true. Ladies and gentlemen, we have overcome the racist issue. Are there pockets of racism Are there individuals who are racist? Yes. But is there a systemic racist problem that requires teaching critical race theory to our children? No. They are doing this to demoralize our children and to make them feel guilty. Where children now, even second graders are coming home telling their moms and their dads that they hate their skin color because they're racist. This is what our children are being taught and being convinced of in our classrooms. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, if there was ever a time for us to rise up and take back local control of our community, it is right now. We should be looking at our children's textbooks now that our kids are back in school. Some of the kids um, are still uh, learning in their virtual classrooms across the country, but we need to be paying attention to everything that our child brings home, what our child is being taught. And we need to push back. If we find this type of, of innuendo and, and um, false teaching or false beliefs 
to teach our children these things, these character traits that we do not have as a country, then we need to rise up as parents, as taxpaying citizens, and demand accountability of our local school districts, our classrooms, even our state legislatures. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we have to ask these people, and these are all questions that you should be asking of your teachers and the teaching organizations and even your school board. Do they believe that governments should deny to any person within the government's jurisdiction the equal protection of the law? And if so, can they show us an academically approved evidentiary basis for supporting and teaching any of the things that I have just mentioned to you, these propositions that I have suggested? If not, how does a statute like what we were talking about that's been introduced in Tennessee, how does a statute that targets only these or any of these propositions that I've mentioned as unfit to present as educationally true propositions to Tennessee students in any way to delegitimizes the teaching profession by calling into question the teacher's academic qualifications and pedagogical decision-making? How does that happen? How? How does that affect that? Because remember, when I started, Mark wrote this letter to one of our elected officials saying that this, this statute, this amendment to this legislation stands in the way of the teachers being able to conduct and do their job to teach their children. But we need to know where are the teachers coming from? Remember, the teachers that are in the classrooms today were sitting in university teaching schools. They have learned this garbage. They, had com- they have been convinced by their professors, their racist, anti-American professors, that America is evil, that because we are white and because we are privileged, we are systemically racist and we are evil. These teachers went through these teaching programs, and these teachers are now in your child's classroom. You need to know, where does your teacher stand on these issues? The citizens of Tennessee, by virtue of their elected representatives, want to work to resolve these sensitivities of those who feel this statute aimed at only a few politically rogue persons who may have lodged themselves in a position to influence Tennessee children in order to forward their political objectives rather than an education as objective and factual as possible. (sighs) Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're confronting. And if we're going to keep and preserve this republic It is going to require we the people, moms and dads, taxpaying citizens to be engaged, to pay attention to what is being taught, to sit in on your child's virtual classroom, to ask your child when they come home from school every day, how was your day? What did you learn today? Did anything you learn, was it something that you hadn't thought about or you didn't know before or that just was disturbing to you? These are questions we need to engage our children. We have to have these questions. And if we find out that this propaganda and critical race theory is being taught or these concepts that we just talked about are being taught to our children, then we need to hold these people accountable. We need to let other parents, we need to talk to other parents, our children's friends' parents, and find out what they're hearing, what their children are are talking about. Because it helps when we, we grow a base of support in our community so that we're not fighting this battle by ourselves. But we've got to have the evidence, and that requires us speaking to our children, talking to them about these values and these issues. How is God going to judge us? You know, we are a Judeo-Christian nation. We do have a responsibility to stand up and defend this republic and to teach our children the values, the the Judeo-Christian values that are in the Bible, that should be taught in the classrooms of our schools. Unfortunately, because of the direction this country has been going for a long time, we're not. But we can't, we cannot accept the indoctrination of our children 
in our classrooms, and we cannot remain silent. God warned the prophet Ezekiel, as I reminded you all, that as watchmen, we must sound the alarm. We have to warn others. And one of the ways that you can do that, ladies and gentlemen, is sharing this podcast with your family and friends, letting them know, talking about these issues, asking them what they think. Because remember, the blood is on our hands. Our tax dollars are paying for this propaganda. And if we don't stand up, to demand it be removed, then we are guilty of allowing it to happen. Dietrich Bonhoeffer reminded us, silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak, and not to act is to act. In closing, don't forget to join us for next week's podcast as we continue this conversation about taking back local control of our community And I want to just thank you for your support. God bless you. And on behalf of our Jewish brethren, the state of Israel and these United States, we are so grateful for all of our PJTN watchmen. We're so grateful for your financial support. And we are equally grateful for your continued prayers of the work that we do here at PJTN. God bless you. And I look forward to being with you next week. Thank you again for joining me on this edition of Proclaiming Justice. Please share this podcast with your family and friends. For more information about how you can get involved, please visit our website at pjtn.org. As a PJTN watchman, you can help us keep up the fight to preserve our freedom for our children and their children for such a time as this.